Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So I'm Kelly Toops. I'm the director of Nutrition at Old Ways, and we have a super special guest here today. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, so I am Sheila Prakash. Um, I am a registered dietitian and cookbook author um, and food writer. Um, I spend many of my days writing for uh, the website The Kitchen. Um, my recipes, that you'll site. find <laughs> all sorts of recipes and talking about home cooking there. Um, and my first cookbook just came out um, this past September, Mediterranean Every Day, um, which has been super exciting. Um, and it's all about the Mediterranean diet and just how to, you know, incorporate kind of easy, feel good recipes into your, you know, meals every, every day. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I think we want to talk a lot about pasta today. Um, yeah, I know you have a whole passionate. section <laughs> on your book. Um, but I would love to hear first, I guess, like how um, I'm a dietitian too. And it's so interesting to hear, you know, how you got started with the book or what made you get interested in the Mediterranean diet to begin with or... Totally. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think for me, a lot of it was just the kind of, it was like a perfect, um, you know, I have my background in dietetics, but I also was super passionate about food and, and, and the Mediterranean diet really kind of brings both of those things together, it brings health, but also, you know, love of good food together in one. Um, and, you know, concurrently, I um, studied in Italy for a handful of years, so I did my master's degree in um, just up north, in northern Italy, um, it's the University of Gastronomic Sciences, um, and it's the Slow Food University, um, and so I did my degree there, um, and, you know, was surrounded by this way of eating my, my experience my time there and it just, you know, kind of got ingrained in me, <laughs> this passion for just, you know, fresh, really great food that just also happens to be good for you. <laughs> I love that. I studied abroad in Italy, so. I, oh, you did? Where yeah, did you just, study? Uh, in Sicily. Oh my um, gosh. We went to <laughs> Sicily for a honeymoon. It's so beautiful there. <laughs> it was really, I loved it. And I mean, just as you say, like the Mediterranean diet, there's so many delicious um, foods that are so flavorful, but also happen to be filled with like vegetables and beans and all these ingredients we know we should be eating more of um, as totally. nutrition professionals. Totally, totally. Yeah. And I think it's, it's nice because it's, it's also like nothing's also off the table, like mm -hmm. pasta um, or a glass of wine or, <laughs> or you know, um, a dessert or things like that. It's just all about kind of like fully enjoying your food. Yeah. So I would love to hear if you have like a go-to pasta dish that you make at home. Oh my gosh, we eat a lot of pasta. <laughs> I was trying to think of this. Like, I don't know if we have one specific go-to because we just, we definitely eat it. It's in our, it's our, I think my husband and I eat pasta probably at least once a week. It's the same. <laughs> Easy. Um, but we make um, like a broccoli rabe and sausage pasta mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I love that because, you know, it's, you can, you know, buy a big bunch of broccoli rabe and it cooks down quite a lot. Um, but so you're getting like, so many vegetables in your pasta um, and then I'll you know just you get so much flavor from whether you're using pork sausage or chicken sausage or turkey sausage um, it just gives so much flavor to the dish so we make that a lot and um, that's definitely a favorite um, and we also will just do some like very simple um, in Italian obi pasta or spaghetti aglio e olio which is just um, Olio is garlic in Italian and olio is oil. Um, so it's really as simple as just um, sauteing lots and lots of garlic <laughs> in olive oil um, and maybe, you know, adding some red pepper flakes for heat and then using that as a super simple, like kind of pantry pasta sauce. Um, and that's mm -hmm. fun too, because it's, you can kind of toss whatever else you have 
lying around in there. Um, I have a recipe in my cookbook that is that. And then at the very end, you just toss in tons of arugula. Um, uh, yeah. And I always have like a clamshell of arugula. Yeah. In the fridge is <laughs> just like you mindless salads, easy. Um, and, you know, you don't really think of cooking with it that often, but it adds so much great like peppery flavor. So I love just tossing a few handfuls into the dish at the end and it like lightly um. wilts. And you kind of get your salad and your pasta at the same time. <laughs> uh, but any sort of vegetables you could toss in there because it's such a simple sauce. How would you describe the role of pasta in the Mediterranean diet? Um, especially as a dietitian, you know, we do get questions from people who maybe they might be nervous to eat pasta for whatever reason <laughs> or... <laughs> I know. You're right. You're so right. I mean, I feel like I get that question all the time. Um, every, I think for some reason, especially in this country, we, I don't know, we're taught to think of pasta as a bad thing, as not a healthy thing. But I mean, if you go to Italy, I mean, they're eating pasta often multiple times in a day, you know, it might be part of lunch, it might, you might make another appearance at dinner. And I think the difference between how they treat pasta there and how we treat it here, there's a few things. I think um, the, you know, obvious, very like dietetic <laughs> reason is portion size. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we, <laughs> we cook a, po a box of pasta and think we'll get four servings, say, of the pound of pasta. In Italy, that would probably stretch <laughs> to be, maybe feed six to eight people um, because it might pasta might not just be the only part of the, the meal. There might be, mm -hmm. that might be a starter. And then there could be, you know, some fish or vegetables coming after that. So it's rare that you would go and sit down to this big, big, you know, plate of pasta. Um, so I think that's, definitely something different but I think the other re other reason is um just what the pastas might be filled with I mm -hmm. I speak a lot about this in my book and I talk about instead of thinking of pasta as the main p component of that pasta dish think about the vegetables as the main component of the mm -hmm. pasta dish so I like to switch it um and I think that's a really fun way to think about pasta when we're used to eating pasta sort of as the main dish um, to bulk up that pasta. So cook that pound of pasta, but if you load it with tons of vegetables, it will stretch that dish and you're not going to feel like, oh, I'm just eating a small, smaller bit of pasta that I want to, but you're eating a lot more good things in there and it's still going to feel like as bulky and satisfying. That's such a good point, too, because I think, yeah, you forget that on a traditional Italian menu, the pasta would be like the preemie mm -hmm. and not necessarily like the way we think of things here, a big entree of whatever it might be, whether it's a huge steak or a huge bowl of pasta or exactly, uh, you. Exactly. And just like slowing down and enjoying it. You know, I think that's so much a component of the Mediterranean diet as well as just really like savoring every bite, you know, and we're always so rushed and busy and shoveling it down. And, and it is a lifestyle, the, di um, the Mediterranean diet as well. It's not, it's not just what you're eating. That's so true. I think that's an important point. It's about the pleasures of the table and, um, you know, not necessarily eating in front of the television or, uh, <laughs> you know. Yes, we're all, we were all guilty of it. We've all done it. But yeah, exactly. Trying to slow down and enjoy the, your pasta. Yeah. Because, I mean, what's not to like about it? <laughs> Do you have any tips for people who are interested in trying whole grain pastas? Like maybe what types of toppings they might pair well with or? Totally. Yeah. So whole grain pasta is so kind of a funny way. I feel like I had I have like a, a love hate relationship with the whole grain pasta for a while. I remember when it first came out a handful of years ago. I think I was in high school or I you know, I was young and I remember my dad kind of just going all in. So like <laughs> no more normal pasta, only whole whole grain, whole wheat was 
I thought that would be the what we'd be eating for the rest of our lives, and it wasn't very good. You know, it was very dense, tasted totally different. You, the texture was just very hearty, and we were tossing it just you know in our regular you know marinara sauce, and it just it didn't fill the same satisfaction that you know regular traditional pasta did. Um, but when I went to Italy, I noticed that they had both. You know, they were they 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 do have whole grain pastas there, and they also have their regular pastas. And the biggest difference was they weren't just swapping it in all the time. Really, to whole grain pasta can be delicious, but it is really about what you're pairing it with, what kind of sauces you are pairing it with. So just like if if you're you know pairing I don't know red wine with with fish you it, you really wouldn't like a flaky white fish They're, they just are too opposite and the wine is too strong and the the fish is too mild so the the pasta is similar if you're having a very hearty whole grain pasta if you want to just toss it in a very light mild marinara sauce it's not they don't complement each other so wh what i really like to do is pair whole grain pasta with really hearty flavors mm -hmm. um so i think hearty vegetables work really well with whole grain pasta like roasted broccoli or roasted cauliflower i think pairs really well um, and also kind of like stronger flavors if you like them like anchovies capers things like that that Those umami kind of exactly yeah like lots of parmesan maybe like pe pecorino cheese which mm. has even more of that kind of like salty like little bit of funkiness to it can handle you know, they, they work together in tandem. Um, and I would also say, like, you know, if you're not really, if you're dubious about a whole grain pasta, as I once was, um, you know, there's a lot of different ones to try. Um, I think one whole grain pasta that is not as popular, it's a little, it is a little harder to find, though it is becoming more popular, is Kamut pasta. Mm, and so yeah. kamut is a whole grain, um, but it is, it's a little different than just whole wheat, the, you know, the actual plant grain. Um, and it has a milder flavor um, and it makes actually for a ten, a pretty tender pasta um, that is a little bit more similar to just traditional regular semolina pasta so I also think that's really worth exploring that's a good suggestion I'll have to look for that I don't think I've seen that in my neighborhood but definitely something to keep an eye out for uh, we interviewed um, Bob Quinn uh, about his role uh, in the Kamut project for a blog a, oh, cool. a few years ago so <laughs> it was neat to learn about um, yeah, everything that they're doing it's a little doing. harder to find I mean I think like even, I mean, the first time I discovered Kamut pasta was in Italy. Um, you know, I had a friend who was um, gluten intolerant. Um, and even though Kamut is a grain and it is a, a strain of wheat because it is a less, hasn't been processed. Uh, over the years in the same way that regular wheat has. Those who just have some mild gluten sensitivities, not people who are celiac, they just, they can't eat it either. But if you just have a mild gluten sensitivity, sometimes you can actually handle this kamut. Um, and so she had found it when we were in Italy and really took to it. And that was the first, and this, that was the first time I found it. And I, it is still harder to find in this country, but it is becoming a little bit more you know, at health food stores or places like Whole Foods or an Italian market might help have it. Have you tried any of the newer, like, legume pastas or bean <laughs> pastas? I have tried a few of them. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm the biggest, I'm not the biggest fan, but <laughs> I do think they have a place. I think Bonza is probably the best of the bunch, uh, the chickpea pasta. Um, I, I mean, I, I think there's a time and a place for them. I think, you know, if you are trying to get more protein in your diet or, you, you know, you really can't eat gluten, um, I do think there's a time and a place for them. I don't necessarily think they're always a healthy alternative for everybody. Um, I think, you know, for those certain circumstances, they're, they're a good choice. But I think 
the mindset of, oh, they're just automatically healthier than regular pasta isn't really the case. Um, like I, I mean, every healthy is, you know, everybody's healthy is different, right? So yeah. um, for, for some people, you know, eating, like I said, eating regular pasta and, you know, filling it with vegetables is really going to be just as healthy as 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 a as a bean pasta so I, I think they're worth exploring and trying and if you love the taste and the texture of them like absolutely but I would never want to say like oh they're they're much better you should just push regular pasta aside and only eat bean pastas <laughs> yeah and I mean I think there's something to be said for the fact that these you know wheat-based pastas have been eaten for centuries truly um throughout the Mediterranean and Italy in particular Absolutely. That is so true that I mean, and, and I mean, some of these new fangled pastas, if you look at the ingredient list, they can run a little long. And I'm always of the belief, like the shorter the ingredient list, the better. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you look at the back of regular pasta, it's, you know, semolina flour, <laughs> you know, that's about it. Um, maybe egg. Um, and some of these new products, you know, they run a little bit longer because it is, you know, they had to create something to mimic flavor and texture. And so mm -hmm. they had to put some different things in there. And so they're not always going to be the best choice. But like I said, I think, you know, they're, they are loaded with, you know, good things like protein and things like that that are worth and fiber. So, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, in my nutrition studies, we talked a lot about like the ingredients that went into the food, but we maybe didn't spend quite as much time talking about how the different processes impact the overall nutrition. And one of the things I found really interesting about pasta is how when the dough gets extruded through the dyes, it actually compacts the starch structure so that it digests more slowly. Um, and this is why we see uh, pasta actually having a lower glycemic index than foods with a comparable amount of flour and water. Um, so I just think that's, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, how the foods are processed can have positive and negative impacts and that, you know, there was yeah. inherent wisdom in the way this was done. That's super interesting. And to go along with that, I know I was taught too that by cooking your pasta to al dente, which is the <laughs> Italian tradition, that similar, the glycemic index is going to be better. And and I mean that that was just that's just how they eat their pasta, <laughs> right? So I not mean, too mushy, more not too a mushy, little firmer. Have like a little bit of a bite to it, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Really, and it tastes good that way too. It I think that way. exactly. <laughs> um, for our our viewers who have purchased your cookbook, do you have a favorite pasta re recipe that you would recommend they start with? Oh gosh, I love them all. Of course, they're all <laughs> yeah. my babies. It's like saying, "Do you have a favorite child?" Um, I mean, I do think that one I was just talking about is like such a great way into this sort of way of thinking about pasta that it's the it's a bucatini aglio e olio with wilted mm. arugula um i think it's like i was saying it's the, that concept of kind of filling your plate filling your pasta with more vegetables than you might typically is just a great habit to get into to really make make your pasta work for you, you know, get everything in there. Um, and that, you know, like, you're, like I said, you're, since you're not even chopping any vegetables, you're just throwing some handfuls of arugula in there. And you don't even need if, to do arugula if you don't like it. If baby spinach would be really great mm -hmm. as an alternative or baby kale, something that just kind of wilts quickly. Um, so I love, I love that recipe I think it's just super accessible um and tasty sounds, sounds like a good weeknight option too like it sounds so, pretty fast it's so fast and you probably already have everything <laughs> in your pantry which is nice you know you have the components for the sauce and you just need a box of pasta if you don't if you don't have bucatini spaghetti any long noodle or short noodle really would work um and you know any sort of green that you might have lying around in the fridge will work in there and um, you know even if you have something that's kind of starting to go, turn you know starting <laughs> to get a little 
a little slimy, throw that in there and it, it'll wilt and cook down and it'll be, it's a perfect way. It's also like a no waste way to get rid of some things in, in your refrigerator. Um, so I love that dish. I think that is definitely one of my favorites. I have a lot, I'm trying to think what else I really love. There's also a easy, super easy, also really weeknight friendly, um, a pesto pasta I have mm. in the cookbook. And that it was inspired by a dish I would make for myself all the time when I was living in Italy and I was living by myself. Um, and I, I mean, I ate a lot of pasta those days, I think maybe nightly. Um, and it was, it's just a simple uh, pesto pasta. You can use store-bought pesto, your favorite store-bought pesto, or if you happen to have some on hand that you made, especially as it gets warmer in the summer. And then the added component is radicchio, which is not something you often, it's not as popular um, mm -hmm. as, you know, maybe you'll see like tomatoes paired with a pesto pasta. But radicchio has this bit of a bitter flavor. Um, it is, right. It's a bit of a strong flavor, but I actually really love love pairing it with pesto because pesto is so rich and it has, mm. you know, it's like cheesy and the oil. Um, and it, when you, when you add this radicchio that you actually broil, so it wilts, um, it, the bitterness is tamed with the mm. cheesy pesto, which I really love. And it also just makes like a really pretty dish because you have this purple radicchio and the green pesto. It's just very color, colorful. <laughs> That's yeah, I don't think I would have expected that combination. But the way you explain it sounds perfect and very balanced. Yeah, exactly. And then you have, you know, similar to the other one I was mentioning, then you have like your salad component thrown mm. in there. So there's, it's like a one pot dinner, one easy, you don't have to have any other sides or worry, worrying about that. Everything's in there. And if you wanted to add some protein, I mean, you could throw, I think, you know, even some beans would be really nice thrown in there. Some white beans or chickpeas, um, or That's an you know, underrated combination. I think yeah. I'm a big chickpea and pasta person. <laughs> yes, it's and it's very common in Italy. Um, pasta e ceci is a very common dish, and yeah, it's so. If you're if you're looking for something hearty, pairing beans and pasta, you will be <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> yeah. I learned that first from a friend who. Um, married a man who was vegetarian and oh looks like we lost we lost our connection here let's see hi i, oh, I disconnected sorry. for a minute yeah we lost each other <laughs> Um, I was just saying um, the pasta and chickpeas too. I was uh, speaking with a woman who said she learned that from her husband who was vegetarian. And he was like, yeah, just think of it like little meatballs. You know, you don't need <laughs> the, the, the whole big meatballs. And I was like, oh, that's a good way to think of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, it's similar, like if you think like beans and rice, you know, the mm -hmm. starch and protein, it's like the Italian version. <laughs> Um, I guess before I let you go, um, is there a pasta dish that you're dying to have in Italy again um, when COVID is over? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm just dying to travel again. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, gosh, I pretty much I would take just about any of the dishes, pasta dishes I, I eat in Italy, but I uh, Probably I would, if I could be anywhere right now in Italy, it would probably be, I, I worked on a farm um, outside of uh, Siena in uh, Tuscany, Italy, um, Spinocchia. Um, and I worked there right after I graduated college and I worked out in the, the garden and um, we had guests. It was a, what they call in Italy is an agriturismo. So it's a working farm, but also people would come and stay from all over the world a lot would come from the U.S. and um, so we would have these big family style dinners every every night and all the different kind of vegetables and things like that I picked during the day would then get incorporated into the dinners um, and I mean if I, I would just I would just want one of those pasta dishes again that we would have every night in the summer you know they would be so simple they would often just be you know maybe 
maybe just, you know, some pasta with sauteed zucchini or, you know, some herbs, tomatoes, it was never anything complicated, but it was just, I mean, the vegetables were picked that morning. They were super fresh. And I, the, the woman who ran the kitchen, I mean, she just had that, that touch, you know, mm. that, that Italian, uh, Italian grandmother touch, you know, who just knew how to make it taste so incredible. So that's, I could go for that. Definitely. <laughs> so farm to table, just so simple yeah. and delicious. Yes. <laughs> Great. Well, do you have any, anything else you'd like to share? I don't think so. No, I just, you know, pro pasta. I yeah. People to eat pasta and don't be afraid of it. It's, you know, it's, it's such a, you know, blank slate for so many flavors and ingredients. So it's always a good thing to keep around. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, we love that it's just a canvas for so many other healthy ingredients and, uh, you know, can really be anything that you want it to be. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Sheila. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.